Cisco. It's short for San Francisco, the place where Stanford computer scientists Leonard Bosak and Sandy Lerner founded the company in 1984. The Cisco logo, which may initially appear to be just a series of vertical lines, actually represents the Golden Gate Bridge. Cisco is a leader known worldwide for its achievements in the networking space. It's one of the top technology brands that is recognized globally. It's a very prestigious company, highly respected, and I decided to quit. Don't get me wrong. I owe a lot of my success to Cisco, and Cisco has been an absolutely fantastic company for me. I'm sure all of you are waiting for me to answer the question, well, why have I actually left Cisco? Well, just a second, I do want to tell you how good and amazing Cisco was for me. While at university, I was able to take a year out to do an internship with some company, and I was lucky enough to get accepted into the Cisco International Internship Program. Sadly, that program no longer exists, but I was one of the people that actually managed to be part of it. And as part of that internship, I was flown out to San Jose, California, or in other words, the Silicon Valley, the, the, the heart of where Cisco was actually made. I had my flights paid for, I had my accommodation paid for, for the whole year, and I got a working full-time job, which also gave me a salary. So it was literally the dream thing for any student to be part of. And that's where my engineering career has absolutely flourished. Then when I came back to the UK after a year to finish my dissertation, I was working part-time with Cisco as well, with that same team. I also did my dissertation with Cisco. And then as I finished and graduated university and finished my bachelor's degree, I went on to work full-time with Cisco, working and leading the UI efforts of uh, constructing all the internal quality assurance dashboards. Now, throughout the time I was at Cisco, obviously there was a lot of changes. People that were my friends left. There were changes within the structure of the organization, how things worked, who manages what, is the team performing as it is supposed to. So why did I decide to leave? What was the trigger point for me that made me think, hmm, maybe I should look at other opportunities? Well, I was always an extremely creative person. I loved UI, I loved frontend, and that's what I did for most of the time while I was at Cisco. I had big responsibilities, I had targets to meet, but then with the changes and the management and people that were responsible for certain things left and everything to do with the responsibilities of the people kind of came over you and you had to deal with it. And the job you worked so hard on for the whole of your career was just gone. I was a front-end developer, that's what I dealt with, that was my speciality. But I've been getting tasks that completely fall outside the spectrum of work that you are supposed to do. For example, a creative developer shouldn't have to work in a spreadsheet. I felt like my creative mind and the way I want to do things is different to what Cisco was offering me. Uh, I felt like I could achieve more. I wanted more opportunities. I was like thriving to uh, be the person who's out there and makes a huge impact. I also wanted to advance and get a better position, but that's not something that I was able to get within Cisco in the time period that I was there because it's a huge company, it's corporate, it's a little harder. So one day I just decided to have a fresh start. I went on LinkedIn, I opened up my positions and I hoped for the best. And one of the opportunities that popped up there was a role for a developer advocate. And the only reason you should take up a developer advocate role is because you actually love and enjoy the product. I had an incredible recruiter contact me and propose a job role, which was a developer advocate role. Now, I've already started searching for dev advocate roles previously. I had other companies lined up that were also interested, but this company called Permit.io, something about it just, just made me feel like this is the right choice. I loved the product, I loved the concept, uh, I, I ended up meeting the team and I ended up loving the team, and uh, it, it was just great. It just seemed like the perfect fit. It, it was the route for me to escape the corporate work and focus on the things that I think are important, have the flexibility to do incredible things and bring a huge impact. And with that, I actually bagged myself the job at Permit.io. 
So that's probably a new thing for you guys to hear. Yes, I'm now working for a startup. Yes, I am working in a incredible team which is full of chaos and new ideas and it's fast paced and I love it. Now for those that may be wondering what Permit is, it's a full stack authorization solution, meaning that whenever a user authenticates through a third party provider like Auth0 or Super Tokens or Fusion Auth, then we take over that responsibility and we authorize the user. We make sure that he has the right permissions to perform the right actions. It's a new journey for me, it's a new fresh start and it was a bold move. And with this video, I wanted to say to anyone out there who is interested in something, who wants to change something in their life, who needs change, who wants to flourish in a place where they would feel confident, don't be scared to make that first move. Yes, you're leaving a team that you previously liked, you're leaving people that you're used to and the work that you're used to, but if you feel like it's the right thing to do, you should definitely do it. And I promise you, you won't regret it. You need changes in your life, especially when you're a developer. You need to look for new opportunities that will make you excited about coming to work every single day. And that's exactly what's happening with me today. I hope you guys enjoyed this little story time. Make sure to always follow your instinct with what's best for you. And I'll see you in the next video.